This is the coronavirus update for April the 12th, 2020. It is Easter Sunday. Hope everybody's having a nice Easter. I'm Dr. Eric Beyer. I am a cardiothoracic surgeon in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's get right to the worldwide numbers. You can see there's been over 1.8 million cases diagnosed worldwide and over 113,000 deaths. If you look at the United States, we still lead the way. We had over 30,000 new cases in the past 24 hours with over 1,830 deaths. And you can see the rest of the countries on that list. In the United States, again, over 550,000 cases diagnosed with over almost 22,000 deaths. And if you look at the states, New York, New Jersey, Michigan, Massachusetts, they all lead the way in total number of cases. Florida has moved below Illinois. Here is a list of the total new cases in the past 24 hours. I've, I've uh, brought them from top to bottom, as you can see here. New York leads the way, and you can see Texas is above Florida. Connecticut is right behind Florida, and it's a very small state compared to Florida. So you can see they're having a large number of cases. In Florida, the total number of cases is 19,347. We've had 452 deaths. You can see we've leveled off clearly, and the case numbers seem to be decreasing. Certainly, they're leveling, leveling off, and the total number of deaths seems to be holding steady. Of course, this was Easter weekend. We'll see what the numbers show tomorrow. But in Broward County, there are 2,865 cases with 76 deaths. And in Dade County, there are 6,826 cases with almost 100 deaths in uh, Dade County. There's, there was a very good study out. I got several text messages and emails from uh, people around uh, the country that, that sent me this uh, the study. The CDC has published this study early. It shows that the coronavirus can travel up to 13 feet and it is on the bottom of people's shoes. And they did this study in Wuhan, China. The research is being published early and you can see the aeros aerosol distribution characteristics, characteristics indicate transmission up to 13 feet. And furthermore, the ICU staff had positive cultures for a virus on the bottom of their shoes. I think this is a very interesting information. This was the actual study. It came out of the Emerging Effect Infectious Diseases Journal. And you can see this was done out of Wuhan, China. And these were the studies. You can see the rate of positivity was much higher for the ICU than for the general ward, which stands to reason people in the ICU have higher viral loads, higher viral titers, and the disease is more prevalent. And But what was striking, and you can see from this graph, the A chart shows the ICU and the C chart shows how the uh, floor beds work. And you see the air inlet to outlet uh, on both of those shows where the virus potentially could be going. That's where they suspected they would find a lot of it, not away from it. They found plenty of virus away from the flow of the air ventilator system. And there was certainly virus in the outflow of the ventilator system. It's really important to understand this, especially for hospitals, when they set up their ventilation systems so that uh, the outflow goes away and filters through some sort of antiviral filter. Also, this is interesting. Here is a table one from the uh, chart, and you can see the floor clearly had a lot of virus in it, 6.6 .6 by 10 to the 4. The only higher number was the air outlet filter was 1.5 by 10 to the 5. And you can see the other areas were trash can, the mouse of the computer, the bed rail, and the patient's mask, of course, had high levels. I think the other interesting thing was the pharmacy. I think this was the point. The pharmacy, which has no patients coming in and out of it, the floor had very high titer of uh, virus. And that just shows you that people are carrying this around on the bottom of their shoes. And I think that's important to understand because if you can carry it around on the bottom of your shoes, you can carry it around anywhere. And I also think that's why in warmer environments, this virus is having a problem. As we walk outside to the warm air, it doesn't like that so much if you were walking outside in the colder air and then you were able to walk it back to your house and then you take your shoes off, touch your face, you've got the virus. And that is the point. I think it's super important now that we clean our shoes. I've been doing this actually for two weeks now. I've been spraying the bottom of my shoe when, whenever I go outside. It doesn't matter where I go, even when I do my daily walk or if I go to the hospital or if I go to the grocery store. When I come into the garage, I have a Clorox bleach spray and I spray the bottom of my shoes, take my shoes off, leave them there, and I might spray a little bit around it as well. And then I'll come into the house and take a shower every time. And I think that this is going to be important moving forward that we somehow keep the bottom of our shoes clean, whether there's some sort of a solution we step in as we go in and out of different buildings. 
and keep those bottom of your shoes clean and keep them out of your house is going to be super important moving forward. So you can see in China, they have been spraying this, this disinfectant all over the streets. I don't know why we're not doing that. They should be doing it in New York on the streets and in the subways and certainly be cleaning off the railings and those kind of things uh, to keep uh, everybody safe. And they will spray themselves down with disinfectants. That was the other thing in the study. They noticed on the sleeves of the workers that they had viral uh, contaminant. Not so much on the mask, but on their sleeves and other areas of their body. So that's why they wanted to make sure they uh, cleaned them up. They're even fumigating different areas, as you can see. And they're using drones to do this as well, to sp spray this aerosolized uh, disinfectant uh, all over the place. I, I found this a little this is a little side note. There was a, a company out there that's making uh, certain textiles in England, and they're working on a uh, cloth that has uh, these glycoproteins on it that also bind the virus and then kill the virus. And I think that if you were able to use uh, these, what they call germ trap technology, and you can see here in this picture, there's this antivirus snood, which I imagine is the what they call this device around the uh, the person's face and nose. And what you, what happens is they say that they can catch up to 96 of the viral viral load, 96 percent of the viral load coming through this cloth because the virus will attach to the glycoprotein and then it'll be killed there. And this has been studied before. And you will remember from our past talks, glycoproteins are important. That's what's on the ACE2 receptor. That's what the virus is attracted to. If you've got it on a mask and it can attach it and then kill the virus before it enters your body and gets into your esophagus or the, into the mucosa of your mouth, then that's the thing. Glycoproteins are all over the place. You know, they're in your mouth, they're in your mucus. Uh, other glycoproteins that you might have come into contact with are the whites of eggs. It's that sticky, filmy uh, material that you get your hands on, and it can be on the outside of chicken as well. Those are all glycoproteins. They are on the outside of your cells as well, and that's what the virus uh, has a tendency to attract itself to. And you can see some pictures of them here, and on this, this is a cell membrane. You can see the glycoprotein on the cell membrane, like we talked about. Uh, in the past for the ACE2 receptor. Here's how some of the cloths are thinking they're gonna work. You can see the human host on the left of this uh, graft, and then you've got this active layer that mimics human cell membranes, the virus attaches to it, and then you've got this, this zinc uh, um, that, that is also attached uh, to this glycoprotein, which will kill the virus. And this seems like a very smart way to make a, a cloth, a simple cloth that will help protect you against even influenza and other types of viruses. So this is uh, interesting to me. Uh, other interesting note is off the coasts of all these countries, there are over 90,000 crew, ship crew members that are just sitting on these ships. And they think in South Florida or in Florida, there are over, over 35 crew ships with 35,000 crew members hanging out on these ships, waiting to uh, find a place to go. And as you know, if anybody's been on a cruise, all those um, people that are helping with taking care of you, uh, those people are, are sitting on these ships off the shores of Florida and other countries as well. Finally, I just want to wrap up with Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is now back out of the hospital, thank goodness. He stated just today it could have gone either way. Well, I was very worried about him last week. I'd love to know what the doctors treated him with. It'd be very interesting to see what they decided to use on him. He is now um, in his uh, uh, country estate, which is the prime minister's country estate. It's called Checkers. It's similar to our Camp David for the president. And he is going to recuperate there, convalesce there, and hopefully he'll get better. It seems like a uh, beautiful place. And hopefully he'll get better and uh, make excellent progress and be there for his child's birth in a couple of months. That is it for me today. I want everybody to stay safe, take a walk in the sunshine, cover your mask, cover your face with a mask in the grocery store, and clean the bottom of your shoes. You never know who might have spit or caused a contaminant. You walked in, it's sticking to the bottom of your shoes. Clean those shoes off and stay healthy. We're going to get through this. Uh, it seems like we're heading in the right direction. Take care.